All right, good, good. So we are here on our first Thursday morning for Nourished. I feel like in some of my uh, emails and things, it says Nourish in one place, Nourished in another place, either way. So whether you take it as I am nourished, as an affirmation, a statement, a declaration for making this time for yourself, or nourish in terms of more of a verb, right? Like an active choice to take in what is offered, whether it's this class that I'm offering to you or throughout the course of your day, when you take a sip of your tea or coffee, whether you sit with your lunch, um, if you receive a hug from someone, right? Figuring out how do I actually let that nourishment kind of like permeate me and receive it and really feel it, enjoy it, okay? So for this morning, um, are we good on, on sound levels as I backed up with the music on? Okay. Uh, for this morning, we're gonna do just a tiny introduction to a developmental pattern. Uh, I'll give you a tiny bit of theory or imagery so that it kind of makes sense consciously. And then we'll drop that into, of course, feeling it and experiential practice. Um, from an outside perspective, like if someone walked by in your household, they might feel like you're just laying there doing nothing <laughs> with exploring this uh, pattern, this developmental pattern initially. And yet internally we will be tracking, scanning, sensing this pathway and then using the pathway or pattern to start generate, generating movement uh, in a way that hopefully feels juicy and connected from your center radiating out and all limbs connected back into your core center. So if you'd like, touch your navel, <laughs> find your belly button, or as my uh, the friends I stayed with in California, they have little kids and there's a book called Bebo. <laughs> Where's your Bebo? Your belly button. So find your belly button, palpate in and then around your belly button just for the sake of connecting to this part of your body so you're not like massaging or doing anything specific it's bringing awareness and kindness to this is my belly center my navel having a moment to acknowledge that this is our nourishment when we're in the womb right this is how we're connected to our mother's body and how we receive nourishment in those early weeks and months. And you might sense in your sense of your pelvic bowl, you might feel, oh, this is kind of a different place. It's like my center of gravity, my pelvic bowl sits lower. There's a deeper, lower quality to our center of gravity compared to our belly center, navel center. And just being like, okay, cool, I can access both of those places. I can locate that part of myself. So this developmental pattern, uh, which is second in the framework of total body connectivity, Peggy Hackney and Ermgard Bartenius work. If you wanna dig into the theory, just email me and I will send you lots of good stuff. Um, but it's the second pattern coming after breath. So breath is life first, right? Like the, the cells are pulsing with life or vitality or prana, life force. And as we develop them, we're organized around this navel center. So first we're alive. There's that animating prana or life force of our breath, our actual aliveness. That next pattern very early on in the womb, which we now voluntarily will revisit as adults. <laughs> is called core distal. You can say that out loud if you want, core distal. Core meaning core center, distal meaning the periphery, the edges of our reach, fingertips, toes, crown of the head, and tailbone. And if you want, take a moment to acknowledge crown and tail. We usually think that we have only four limbs, arms and legs, 
But according to this developmental pattern and this organization of our body from center out and everything out coming back in, we have six limbs. Our head and tail are included <laughs> as two of those limbs, okay? So it's kind of like a starfish, like the mouth center and then all the tentacles radiating out. Uh, from the center, and then when they're reaching into the environment for food, they bring it back into their mouth to eat it. <laughs> a little different creature than we are, but a similar organization, a radial organization or radial symmetry. We could think of it like the morning rays of sun, right? Like the locus of center, the sun is ah, connected and nourishing us out through all these pathways and all six limbs are tethered, connected, fed back into our core center, okay? So core distal or navel radiation, two different names, same pattern. And we're gonna start with some guided imagery in Shavasana. <laughs> so add a layer for warmth, make sure you stay nice and cozy. You can come on down to the floor in some kind of Shavasana. It might be face up, might be face down. And you're welcome to add some support for your knees, ankles, head and neck. So maybe folded blankets, maybe rolled blankets or a bolster. If you're using a larger bolster for your knees, I would suggest that you also then support under your ankles. So the roll of blanket can go right behind the Achilles tendon above your heel. Okay. Good. And up to you if it's convenient to shift your camera angle so that I can observe as we move later on in class, that's helpful. If you don't wanna bother, don't worry about it. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> Good, so finding what is usually the last pose in a class, Shavasana, corpse pose, today as our first. And again, if our mind has any opinions about like, I just got out of bed, am I really gonna just lay down on the floor again? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes we are. We're going to ease into this day. Good. Excellent. So taking a moment first to arrive. And maybe arriving for you means adjusting sleeves or pant legs, taking glasses off, adding a blanket, making any last adjustments for comfort so that you really can draw your attention, consolidate your attention inward, not getting distracted by those other bits and pieces. Good. Appreciate that you've given yourself that care. And then maybe a sigh, maybe a yawn, Maybe a horse lips. Take a couple of conscious breaths to start to set the intention that I'm going to be here now. I get to receive this quiet, subtle, restful practice. So first, I want you to see if you can draw your awareness down into the back surfaces of your body. Feeling how the floor rises up to meet you. the places that have contact or pressure. 
inviting yourself to give in to that support. Could I allow myself to soften or spread or sink in a little more fully, a little more deeply to that sense of support? This is a skill, embodied skill or somatic skill called yielding. Can I yield or give my weight to the ground? Can I be in partnership with the earth, trusting that I'm held and carried? And being okay, offering yourself compassion for any parts of you that aren't fully releasing or letting go. No need to wrestle with them or judge them. Just say, okay, fine. I'm noticing you. And then draw your awareness back to the quietness of your breath. And see if you can start to bring all your awareness like all those tendrils of the starfish, all the thoughts out in the world, draw them in one by one, feel your attention gather or concentrate down in your belly center. Allowing your belly to be moved by the breath not necessarily breathing deeply, consciously with effort or, or voluntarily, but just noticing, oh, when I rest, my breath is allowed to move here. So locating your sense of navel center, belly center, center of gravity. Consolidating your attention there and appreciating this mobile, receptive, juicy, fluid, responsive, central part of you. Let's see. <laughs> Staying with this quality of Easeful curiosity, fluid, receptive, mobile, changing moment to moment through your center. And then over the next few moments, <clears throat> we're going to allow and observe, doing our best to observe which of these six limbs wake up or feel a sense of connection first? Where does this energy of my center start to flow into? There's no right or wrong answer. It doesn't need conscious direction from your mind. Listening and observing. If there was an abundance of vitality, energy, juiciness, from my belly center, where does it start to flow outward? How does it move or spread? Which pathway, which limb does it start to trace? You might give it a quality or a color, or you might feel temperature warmth of your awareness or a coolness and stay with the pathway that your body has chosen, allowing that nourishment to spread and trace all the way through that pathway, that limb to its distal end. As if that limb, that pathway was a tube, a channel water running 
clear all the way up through the end or filling the container of that tube to the end reaches of it. And then once you've found that complete pathway radiating out, 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 let your attention and that vitality, that nourishment, gather back in, flow back into belly center. Pausing at your center for a few moments to drop any agenda, drop any judgments. And we'll invite one more opportunity like that to listen. Where does it want to flow next? It might flow through the same pathway in the opposite direction. It might choose a whole different pathway. Again, no right or wrong answer. Simply observing in your body, where do I feel this nourishment flowing, radiating, tracing through other parts of me? Can I trust whatever pathway is enlivening and follow it all the way to the distal end? Feeling that part of you with this warmth or nourishment or energy. And then as you feel content or relatively complete with that pathway, allow it to seep all the way back into your center. feeling maybe a bit of gravity or weight as you uh, return to center and just rest your attention there. And taking a small conscious moment now to illuminate all six pathways. So acknowledging your head and your tail if it helps, you can imagine you actually have a long metaphorical silky tail. <laughs> so this vertical axis that we use to sit, walk, stand, move through the world, head to tail, there's a pathway. Navel up through the heart, out through both shoulders, arms, elbows, forearms, wrists, palms of your hands all 10 fingers. And drop back into navel center and feel the pathway from deep in your belly down through both hips, thighs, knees, lower legs, both ankles, both feet, all 10 toes. Good. Dropping back into your starfish center. <laughs> and while again, there's no right or wrong way, if you are a visual person or feel at all disoriented or maybe a bit confused or frustrated, uh, feel free to roll to one side and observe this next part, or you can just follow along with my invitation. Oh, so from this central organization, that starfish image of everything gathering in and in, we're going to start inviting a little bit of movement. And you might feel some pathways connect before others. You don't necessarily have to lift anything off the ground. 
So starting to feel this connection in, in, in to your navel and back out again. And for some of us, it might feel so good to yawn and stretch out. For others of us, we might wanna just curl in and stay in. So really trusting your inner impulse, whatever your body is doing, organized around your belly center, all of it is welcome. So feel free to move slower than you might think. Do a little less thinking and planning, a little more trusting and going with the flow. Asking your body how it wants to move through these pathways, all six limbs radiating out and connecting back in. And again, if you find that there's more effort than you want or more thinking than you'd like, feel free to just pause, let it all go. Come back to listening for that vibrance or pulsation, that kind of yawning open and curling, coiling back into yourself. And it really can happen in so many different ways. Similar to how animals wake up from a sleep and they just do their thing and flip their tail in the air and move and stretch and show their fangs. <laughs> hmm. Stay wherever you're exploring. And if you've given one limb, one side of your body some care, feel free logically to give your other side a similar attention. If you're finding that you need to kick or slide props out of your way, that's okay too. Letting yourself indulge for another couple of moments. And then when you feel a sense of completion enough for now, start to bring yourself back to center. We're gonna organize ourselves a little bit differently now, bringing the knees bent, feet grounded. And sometimes this can be an easier starting place to move into a side-lying fetal curl. So we're still organized with this pattern of our belly sort of calling all of our parts home. And we're gonna let the belly, feel free to watch again if you want. We're gonna let our belly start to roll and curl in, head, tail, arms, legs, all the way into one side. Once you get there, drop any effort back into yielding, and then we yield into the floor to unfurl or open onto our back again. So getting a little bit more specific now about drawing everything in, coming to sideline, drop your effort once you got there. And then through yielding, through that floor-based support, we roll, unfurl, expand, and open onto our back. So take your time. Again, move slower than you might think or might be used to. And see, could I find this as a coordinated, smooth pathway? Everything being curled in, curled in, curled in. 
and take your time to go onto your back once more. Yeah, you can take ponytails out or put hoods up, whatever you need so that you feel like you can roll and slide and kind of slither your way there. Mm -hmm. Seeing if you can minimize effort. Our culture says, let's maximize effort. We're gonna try the opposite. <laughs> How easy could this be? How smooth, seamless, coordinated could all six of my limbs coil in and then opening up onto my back again? Good. Yeah, we'll go each side once more. Find your feet grounded before you start if that's helpful. And then see if you can use the floor. So if parts of you are being picked up away from the ground, see if you can try the opposite. Surrender into the ground as you roll, unfurl, and make your way onto your back. Beautiful, good, really good. Nice, take your time. When you find your way to your side this last time, then pause there. And let yourself rest on sideline for a moment. Again, whatever effort brought you to your side, let it go. Come back to yielding. Good. Have a moment there to sigh or yawn. And then as you Feel the next new breath come in. We're going to press the floor away and come up. And your way to seated. Good. All right. So, so far, so good. How are we? It's okay if that felt weird. <laughs> or different or like I don't exactly know if I'm doing this right that's okay right it's a skill it's a new way of moving and generating movement from this imagery that we're looking at we'll stay with this all month um, and this organization when we get it functional embodied kind of innate again wow does it feel different when we do asana or exercise or whatever else it is right so make peace with whatever nourishment you got from that inquiry and know that as you return to it, return to yourself, the other parts of you will start to sync up and remember and, and understand where we're going with that, okay? So we're gonna shift now from that developmental pattern somatic inquiry into our restorative postures. You're gonna have ideally a bolster. If you don't have a bolster, you can fold bath towels, blankets, couch cushions, whatever you've got to make a nice firm support. And we're gonna set up for a supported child's pose. So if you're familiar with restorative, passive, supported child's pose, you can just do your usual setup. I like to have something to cushion for my shins and then my feet are gonna go off the back of that extra blanket. So if you tend to get calf cramps, foot cramps, toe cramps, I would bring something up under your shins so that your feet don't end up pointing as much when you sit, okay? You can also sit on something to support your pelvis. If you're using blocks, maybe a little layer of something soft so that it's more comfy. That's actually higher than I want today. <clears throat> so sit bones supported, coming from kneeling. Your bolster or pillows or couch cushions are going to find their way to your lap and support your belly. So you're going to have a little pressure against your abdomen. Making your way down. Into 
an initial kind of starting point, like just test out your base model. How is it? If your elbows meet the floor, that's a good thing. If they don't quite meet the floor, you could support under them or take your bolster and your body lower until your arms are resting into the ground, okay? So take a few moments to figure out your particular configuration of this shape. If you want to give your neck and face a little more space, you can elevate your chest. Resting to one side of your face. You could also instead give yourself a forehead support so that you can rest centered. Okay. So I'm here if anyone has questions. If you're watching the replay, you can also pause do your setup and then hit play again. And ideally in restorative postures, we wanna fill and support all of the negative spaces, meaning the holes or contours that aren't supported yet, we wanna fill those so that all parts of us get to rest into that firm support. If you're finding any discomfort through knees and ankles, you could sit higher, elevate your hips a little more. If you're finding that you are ready <laughs> and you are indeed sensing, I'm good, I'm comfortable, let yourself start to yield into that support. You need help, you can always ask, unmute and ask verbally, or you can private message me in the chat if you prefer. So if something's not quite right, let me know. Entering a restorative shape, we ideally wanna have that moment of like, oh, thank you, Ugh, commence drooling. We wanna have that confirmation from our body that really, truly, deeply we're supported. And comfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. As you're resting here, see if you can draw your awareness down, down, down into that same belly center part of you. Feeling how your breath moves in those places. And it's gonna move differently with the front of our belly supported or contained by the bolster. You might start to notice how your back, the back of your waist, back ribs, sacrum are being moved, being washed in, washed out with the wave of each breath. inviting the breath to expand and condense through the back of your body and the sides of your body. If you can allow this coiling in to have a sense of coziness or comfort. That the world outside can wait. And 
we get to have all our attention in word for ourselves for the next little while. You set yourself up with support for your pelvis, your sit bones. There's a prop or your own ankles and feet making contact with your hips, with your pelvic bowl, pelvic floor. You might also allow sensation of each breath to wash into that pelvic bowl space. Breathing deeply all the way down into your roots. Feeling the pelvic bowl receive, expand, and then letting the breath go. Feeling all of you kind of recede and condense and get quieter. How much can I go in and feel okay with going in? to wash in and out of your attention. Everything is welcome without judgment. your own sense of yourself in this moment if everything about this experience is saying stay and stay longer you're sensing a readiness to move or transition maybe you allow your head to turn to the other cheek or maybe allow the spine to lengthen head to tail, taking a little gentle snake-like movement. Maybe rolling your forehead across the prop side to side or squeezing your hands. Readying yourself in your own time to eventually and very slowly start to come out of your child's pose shape. Some of us might roll up to seated. Some of us might push to tabletop. Maybe you want a little table to down dog. Trusting your impulse. This is where I feel like going. So go there. Hmm. If you're moving, continue to be attentive, curious. If you want to simply be and sit quietly, that's great. Good. 
So in the next few moments, we're gonna make our way into side lying. <clears throat> and again, if this is new for you to figure out how to do props and stuff, feel free to watch. If you're familiar, feel free to just go for it and set up as you know how. So for side lying, I personally, I'm gonna use a bolster that will likely for most of us, put us into more of a side bend as we put our ribs over the bolster because it's pretty big, pretty firm. So if you're okay with that side bend, you can do that. If you feel like you want more of a neutral spine, you could do less height, like a folded blanket under your rib cage as you lay down instead, okay? So less height, more neutral spine, more height, it's more of a rounded shape over the bolster. You can test both if you're not sure. You're gonna have a space, a channel for your bottom shoulder. Something to support your head and your neck. And I'm gonna roll this hand towel to fill the space under my ear through my cervical spine. So I'm not propping my head up on a pillow. I'm gonna go under my ear and drape my head over that support so that I have kind of a continuous arc from my heart all the way out through the crown of my head. And then you're welcome to add support between your knees and ankles as well. Okay. If you've got an extra pillow and want to hug with your top arm, you could fill that space under your top elbow, hold a rolled blanket or hold a pillow with that top arm, or just find a place to tuck your arm in that feels okay. And making any adjustments that you might want. Especially if there's any kind of tingly, yummy discomfort or strain, you want to address that earlier or sooner so that while we stay, that doesn't get amplified in the restorative, okay? okay. Offering yourself any last moments to tuck in. and yielding into the support of the props. How well can I allow myself to settle, sink, give in? This is one of my favorite restoratives uh, for folks that want support with breathing better. Also for shoulder stuff, low back stuff, pelvic floor relaxation, it's good for lots of things. <laughs> so invite your awareness into your body, perhaps through this central vertical channel from heart to pelvic bowl, heart to womb, belly center where we began. And noticing how as we give in to resting the underside of our body, that will create then a levity and opening through the upper side of our ribs and our lungs. You might start to feel a deepening of the breath on the top side, kind of propelling your hip and shoulder away from each other on the breath in, making space. And then that top hip and shoulder, ah, rest into each other, receding as the breath washes out. Like a fan opening and closing or an accordion stretching longer and then coming back together.
Enjoy one more breath with that fan or accordion kind of imagery. And then start to notice your top arm, top hand. We're gonna slide the top hand across the heart and through the pathway of our bottom arm. So sliding out to meet hand to hand, maybe reaching beyond the bottom hand, feel how that rolls you forward. And then slide your hand back, tracing the pathway of the bottom arm to your heart and beyond your heart into the opposite shoulder. You'll feel how that rolls you away from me if you're facing the camera or back into the floor, opening a little bit into a twist. So we're gonna do that pathway a few times, slow and easy reach through the bottom arm and beyond on a diagonal, reaching and rolling yourself into the floor a little bit. And then return, retreat, pass through the heart and feel your head and heart roll back into the bolster as you feel your chest open. Just incrementally going back and forth. We're not necessarily looking for the big open twist with the second arm on the floor, letting this be in motion, letting it be lubricating, nourishing for all, all the thoracic spine, rib joints, diaphragm, lungs, heart, lymph in our underarms, One more time, sliding open. However much you open is great. And then retreat back to sideline. This time, just tuck in back where you started. Resting on your side, you can let the top arm tuck in. Okay. <sighs> and then sense your top leg. Top leg, top foot, you're gonna reach down away from your hip, like you're making your waist longer. Reaching out, 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 and then let it bend and come back in towards your navel. Little easy length, maybe yawning, stretching through the sole of the foot, the calf, and then come back in. You might stay with that if that feels good, if that feels like enough, or as you reach out, maybe your foot starts to reach behind you a little on a diagonal, opening up the front of your thigh and hip a little more. As you bend your knee and bring it in, maybe you give it a little hug with your hand. Maybe you reach your foot into your bottom hand, take a little stretch across. Okay, so nice and easy, let it be in motion. Bend your leg from navel center, reach out all the way to the farthest reach that feels good. And then come back in, fold, flex, curl, maybe reach the leg across for a little stretch. One more round. Little easy hip extension back on the diagonal. Your upper body might roll a little too, and that's okay. As you fold the top leg, you come back to your side. Maybe you roll forward a little towards the reach of that leg. Maybe taking it in your hand just for a moment. And then let it go. Come back to side lying. If you'd like, sweep the arm up and over. And then use that arm coming back to your hip to find your way gradually up to seated. Hmm. 
have a moment to observe and notice the two sides of you. You likely will feel different on one side than the other. That's okay. Good. Appreciate whatever you're noticing. It's all information. <laughs> And then as we prepare for side two, uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. You can also private chat to me if you prefer. <clears throat> and you don't have to face me or the camera. So feel free to leave your props and just roll your body to side two. You don't have to switch everything around, okay? Feels good? Yeah, that was a fun little exploration, happy accident last week in my side line where I was like, oh, fun. I can do all these like diagonals and do like a very lazy stretch <laughs> side line. Good, so find your way to side two, supporting your ribs with something firm but soft. It feels like it's too high or too much. If it like starts to impact how you're able to breathe, feel free to do less. So instead of a bolster, maybe a folded blanket. Definitely support for your head and the span of your neck. So letting your neck kind of elongate and rest in the same arc as your heart and ribs. And then a little support under or between your knees and ankles, if you'd like. <clears throat> First, we drop into the sense of support that we have. That term yielding, can I trust that I'm supported? Can I trust that I still get to linger and rest and absorb? this practice, that there's nowhere to rush off to. <clears throat> and can we feel that tangibly in our body, a sense of settling or what some call dropping in? We might feel Parts of our body soften, minimizing effort, finding that we can truly just let ourselves be supported here. Giving in to the weight or our connection down into the ground magically creates the opening, the levity or ease through the top side of our waist, ribs, lung. So spending the next few breaths, feeling the span from underarm to pelvis elongating, opening, widening that space with the inhale and letting it condense, recede, shorten, come back together with the exhale. Really allowing it to come from your breathing Your shoulder and hip are along for the ride. And spending one more breath in your accordion through that top lung, top side of your waist and ribs. And then as you find your exhale, 
all the way coming down into completion. Sense your top arm, top hand. You can connect to your chest or your heart and follow that pathway. It starts at belly center, but we're gonna touch at heart center. Belly to heart, tracing the bottom arm. Pass through hand to hand, reach past on the diagonal. Let it roll you forward a little. Feel the stretch at your shoulder blade or mid back. And then gradually recede, retreat. Come all the way back into your heart. And then pass, swipe across your heart into a little twist opening. And then return again. Letting go of the expectation of getting anywhere or getting fully open in the twist with your arm out. Let it be in motion and enjoy the process uh, of how your heart, ribs, skull will be rolled by this gesture. So your hand sliding will take your body into this sort of spiraling, coiling and uncoiling pathway without you having to think about it. Let your hand slide and feel how your body goes along. The more we can release or trust or soften, the better that this works. <laughs> Efforting here sometimes gets in the way. One more round through your heart, out through the bottom hand, as far as it feels good. And then gradually across your heart, feeling the bolster under you as you roll open. One big inhale. And then sink back into sideline. Let yourself rest. Drop your awareness down, down, down through your pelvis and feel your top leg. So that top leg is gonna to start to speak and reach out away from your belly center. And then let it bend and come back in towards your belly center. And that whole pathway, you might allow your leg to slide along the pillow or blanket. Your big toe slides along the floor. You don't have to support the weight of your leg. Let the floor have the weight of your leg. Good, one more time. Extending or shooting straight down, straight out. And then reconnecting, folding, coming back in. And you might feel good with that pathway or you might start to explore the diagonal. So as you reach out, maybe your toe goes behind you a little bit, feeling a little more opening through the hip and thigh. And then as you curl back in, maybe your leg hugs into your top hand. Maybe you start to reach across. And again, let it be about the process. Just briefly touching each end point of the reach, just as invested on the curling, coiling in before you reach out again. Again, letting go of the agenda of, oh, I got to grab my foot or I need the big stretch. Really trusting it to be moment to moment awareness. And only if your body is saying, oh, fully yes, maybe you have that reach across for a stretch. We'll go one more round. Hmm, feel free to drool, yawn, sigh, whatever you'd like. If the leg makes its way to the diagonal across, maybe you pause there just for one moment. And then let it go, surrender it back to sideline. When you feel an inhalation, let your arm, top arm go up and over. Maybe exhale, stay there. 
And then when the arm sweeps back up, let that help you start to support yourself, pressing the floor away to come up. Have a moment to observe how you are. Just taking note of the changes that you feel, whether they're postural, muscular changes, breath related changes, energetic, mental, emotional changes. And so we're gonna close with one last posture. Um, something that is centered and you might take creative license and do your own thing. <laughs> so something that is relatively centered or symmetrical to bring us out of the asymmetry we've just done, come back to midline. Um, that might mean legs up the wall, might mean legs up the chair or park bench or boulder if you're outside. <laughs> uh, it might mean Shavasana. Um, if you're feeling at all like a little ooh, disoriented, foggy, spacey, whatever, and like you need to function after this, like get to your desk or whatever it might be. Um, I would suggest in that case, um, maybe more of an incline with the bolster on an angle where you're a little bit more upright versus the legs up inversion um, and maybe placing your feet against the wall giving yourself like a firm contact, like back into reality <laughs> that like, okay, I am starting my day and will be able to bring on my alertness when it's time. So find something that's midline or centered. <clears throat> if you're gonna do the incline with your feet grounded, you can peak if you need to. If you're happy to set up how you know, that's fine. Offer yourself any extra love or props, a covering of blanket for warmth. And once you've made those extra adjustments in care, let's all take an inhale and audible exhale, nice big sigh. Letting it go. Allowing yourself to start to drop in again. Settling, getting quiet, becoming still. You might allow yourself to rest and detach from any object of meditation, meaning your attention can simply do what it does. If it feels more grounding or more supportive to have an object of meditation, you could focus consciously with your breath, with a mudra or mantra, or if you'd like, from our inquiry today, feel the inhale, draw down to your tail. If your feet are pressing into the wall, you could inhale and press them 5% more firmly on the in breath. And then on the out breath, let go of the foot pressure, feel your awareness come up through your heart, throat, third eye. So inhale draws down. Exhale releases up, up and out, let it go.
And I trust you each internally to stay with your object of meditation or choose in any moment to let it go or pivot. Trusting your discernment, your impulse. You found the pressing into the feet or object of meditation helpful. Do one, just one more cycle. Pull in and out breath. And then as you finish your exhalation, let go of the concentration, let go of the focus. Let it drop. Trust yourself to drop into being, non-doing. And then over the next few moments as you attune to your breath. Sip in your inhale a little more deep, a little more volume. If it becomes a sigh or yawn, let it happen. On the next in breath, maybe you wiggle fingers and toes. Maybe you step your feet in or slide your legs down if they're up the wall. Coming back towards your belly, navel, center. And take your time to roll side to side a little bit. Another long sip of inhalation, like from a straw. Like take it all in, fill your lungs as much as you can. Mm, as you feel your exhale, let that rocking bring you to your side all the way back eventually to seated. And roll through side line, push the floor away. <clears throat> Finding your way upright. You're welcome to sit on a bolster. Maybe hands at Hakini Mudra, or just let yourself sit for a moment. Hmm. Noticing what you notice. Appreciating yourself for going on this journey with this practice with each other. And then when you're ready, let's bring hands up, eyes open. We're gonna do a symbolic kind of washing of our hands and hair three times to close our practice. So we're just gonna go up and over. <laughs> Come up and over your hair and then down your neck and heart, let it go. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you feel rather delicious. <laughs> uh, if you find that you are a little like spacey, disoriented, hard to focus, whatever it is, 
uh, maybe do some grounding practices before you transition to driving or computer work. <laughs> Sips of water, sunlight on your face, maybe like a bite to eat, uh, do some physical grounding something so you feel like you can make that transition less abrupt uh, if you need to drive or do computer work next, okay? All right, thank you, thank you. Have a great day.